I ran through a few benchmarks on the Onda V820W. This is the Geekbench 3 score, which is around about the same score as the Baytrail Atom Z3735F. Now there wasn't really going to be much of an increase there because the CPU side of things really remains unchanged. And what has increased is the GPU of course. So I move over to the 3D Mark 11 score here, P335. It's about 110 points higher than the Baytrail chip. So there is a slight increase there. Bay trails get normally around P200, 210, 220. This is the Ice Storm 1.2 score. 15,000. That's significantly less than the Cherry Trail Atom, the X5Z8500. Which I'll show you those scores here. So the 8500 gets 3D Mark P425. 3D Mark 11, and this is what it gets here on Ice Storm. So that's an increase of around 10,000 points there between those two chipsets, between the X5Z8300, which is right here, and then the Z8500. So quite a bump there. But there is a difference in the clock speed, so remember that the CPU side is 400 megahertz faster on this chipset. It's right there. Turbo, 400 megahertz faster. And the GPU is clocked 100 megahertz higher there. So that's where the big difference comes into play there. Battery issue that I showed you in my first unboxing and hands-on video is still there. Still a problem. I did do a full drain of the tablet and it's not detecting the full capacity properly here. It's saying the battery wear is still 59%, which of course it isn't. Now checking the battery stats in HW Info, it, uh, it does actually show that it's only been cycled three times, so it's not a used battery. Don't really know what's going on there, but there's definitely a problem with the calibration, so the battery life will actually go down faster than what it, it is. So even though it's dropping down saying I've only got 71% left, I probably have more like 80% left left there. Should be a little bit higher than what is being displayed there. Overall performance doesn't seem to be too bad using Edge here. Just load up techtablets.com. Reasonably quick there to load and scrolling quite smooth. If I use the screen here, you can see that it's very smooth to scroll. Edge definitely has an advantage over Chrome. But it does lag a little bit there when it's loading in that YouTube video. And speaking of YouTube, I will just do a quick 1080p test. Load up a video here and see how that performs. So a few things have popped up and here there's an avatar test. To make sure I'm running that 1080p. Pandora, a world of wonder and mystery. Incredible danger. Alpha Centauri A or A slimmed, except the humanoid Navi. Plants, animals, and marine organisms. It doesn't have a problem Share running that. That's trait. not Emitting bad at all. Now, 4K. Patterns. I think it's going to stutter. Can tell, the we do a 4K video test here. Watch this one, but I'm pretty sure it could probably be a little bit too much for it. Just bring up the 
Task Manager here and have a look at the CPU use. It's around 75% at the moment. It's definitely running in 4K. Just full screen it. Doesn't seem to be too bad. There's, there's a little bit of stutter there I can see. Which I mean is expectable because it's just an Atom chip here. So it's nothing really powerful to be running this. I do have all these other tabs open here, which I'll just switch between them. Doesn't work too bad. The next up, I'll just show you some gaming on the tablet. Okay, so I've got the screen set to full brightness. Let's go and play some GT Racing 2 that I have installed. Controlling it with an Xbox 360 controller just makes it a little bit easier for me, but the accelerometer does work so you can pick up the tablet, move it around and you steer left and right using that. So there's a few little stutters I can see there, but overall it's running the game fine and as it should, Windows Store games are generally quite lightweight and not too graphically intensive to stress them out so they can run on tablets. And even the older Bay Trails run this game just fine. So move on now and have a look at another store game which is Dungeon Hunter 5. This is full volume here, by the way, coming out of that one mono speaker on the rear, this here. Doesn't sound particularly loud. It's actually quite a hopeless speaker. Not loud at all, that's maximum volume. Just to prove it, this here, 100. Very poor. So it's not going to win any awards or anything for the loudspeaker there. The quality is quite awful and it's just the main thing, it's lacking volume as you can hear there. So I'll skip this and get into some gameplay. I'm having issues with this game with the Xbox 360 controller. Oh, there we go. It's trying to force me to use touch. Alright, I think that's enough of Dungeon Hunter 5 there. Move on and show you some Steam games. Team Fortress 2, these are the settings we're going to use. 800 times 600, so quite low there. And these should be on low here.
Yeah, yeah, killed him. That was a stroke of luck. I'm normally horrible at these games. Especially when I'm recording with a tripod in front of me. And I died. This didn't take long at all. So you can see that at least Team Fortress 2 is definitely playable there on those low settings, 800 times 600. On to the next game. Counter-Strike Counter -Strike Global Offensive here. These are the settings. So again, 800 times 600, which I think is going to work the best really on this kind of a tablet with the slightly slower Atom. Everything else is on very low. So let's see how that runs. Counter-Strike on the Dust 2 map. So here goes some deathmatch. Probably will last about 10 seconds. Well, it's not managed to kill one person. Uh, it looks to be headshot only as well, so... Wow, some massive lag just then. It is struggling a little bit to play this with playable frame rates. Dead again. Very fast paced. And dead again. And again. And <laughs> some super stutters just there. Yeah, yeah, I know. I suck at this game completely. All right, so finally I'm just going to show you Dota 2. <laughs> I didn't even see that guy right there. Dota 2 now on the lowest settings, running in 800 times 600. So it's on the fastest setting. Well, it's uh, freezing up there a little bit, and probably because I'm running from an external hard drive. So if you're running this from the internal eMMC, it shouldn't be doing that freezing there. Definitely a fault of running it from a hard drive, I think, because it's caching all the files. And that's what's slowing it down, causing it to freeze there. So if I move around the map, it seems relatively fast. I'll just wait out until the minions and the bots start fighting. So this is a bot game, by the way. Still freezing up on me. My own fault. Sorry about this. So the battle has finally begun and I've got my minions there coming up and another bot. And it is having some impact on the frame right now which is dropping into the lower teens there. Well, higher teens. So it looks like it, it, it can play the game, but desirable frame rates, no. You might even want to lower it to 640 resolution, even lower. But yeah, it doesn't look too good now. Running 15 frames per second, another stutter. Oh dear. I can see also the tablet is flashing a light here now. I think this means that it's getting too hot, that it's throttling. I haven't really seen this before. But that's what I assume it is. 
So that's Dota 2. I'm just going to have a look now. Last but not least, have a look at the temperatures. Oh dear, it's supposed to be running in the background. So temperatures here, got it to launch. We got up to 84 degrees maximum. So the Cherry Trail X5Z 8300 is running hot, at least on this model here, on this Honda. And hopefully you've just seen in that gaming look there at the games I just ran, that it's not really running particularly well, I think. If you're going to be buying this as a gaming tablet, you best to probably wait and have a look at the other tablets that are up and coming soon. For example, the Chewy HI8 Pro that's going to have this chipset in it. Maybe it handles it a little bit better than the Honda. There's also going to be the Chewy HI10 and the Techlast X80 Pro, which is going to have a higher resolution. Same as the Chewy HI8, a higher resolution, 1920 by 1200 and the same chipset on it. So... Hopefully those two tablets, three tablets there, are going to do a lot better than this Onda because I'm quite disappointed at this moment with the Onda here. It's not a real wonderful tablet. Thank you for watching this video here. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what to expect from this tablet. If you were going to buy this, I can honestly say, hold off, wait and see what those tablets have to offer. Bye for now.